Hi, right, Oklahoma. Here we go. It's that time for my spring weather forecast. And oh boy, it has been an active year already. And we're talking about the last several months, folks. We have had uh, well, several records here fall. And we're talking about tornado numbers. Not a good thing. Let's take a look back for December. This past December, we had eight tornadoes. That was a new record. We had five in January. We had 12 in February. Of course, February 26, big day for tornadoes in Oklahoma. We had 12, and that was a huge number. So we're above average for the year. The Gulf of Mexico, our moisture source region, it is warm. It's bath water. That's going to be coming north with the strong jet stream overhead. So the way it looks right now to me, I'm talking about above average temperatures for a good chunk of the U.S., including Oklahoma. Below average well to our north, much above average to our west and southwest. But again, Oklahoma, I think it's a warm spring for the rest of this month, into your April, into your May, into your June. And as far as precipitation, much above average off to our east from Oklahoma to the northeast, below average to our west. And we're going to be really kind of a state divided. I-35 eastward, above average on rainfall, below average across the west, and then kind of a slither of average right in between. So I think we will continue getting in these storm systems with wet weather. The overall look for tornadoes, hail, and flooding, I think it's active. I think we're all above average on that, except for the far west, especially along and east of I-35. I think this will be the most active area for large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes, not as active in the west. All right, so overall, above normal temperatures, drier across the west, wetter in the east, above average tornadoes, hail and flooding okay i think the flooding threat will be higher into eastern oklahoma so i think we end up with a few big severe weather days we'll have to watch that the good news i think the drought continues to slowly weaken and there's some good news for sure but that severe weather threat will be higher and for a more in-depth look at my spring forecast go to news9.com or download the news9 app now let us show you how we'll be using the new and improved bob mills weather center during storm coverage this spring all right, Oklahoma, so here we go. This is really kind of the behind-the-scenes view, if you will. Now, during severe weather, yes, I am on the green wall, just right in front of it, right? This is where all the craziness happens. Off to my right, we have our many, many sources coming in, whether it's radar or storm trackers. I can see all of my storm tracker feeds up there. Other areas of the weather center that are extremely important to what we do to bring that severe weather home to you include our social media pod and uh, Andrew Adams. Tell everybody at home exactly what it is you do. Yeah, David, I'm combing through a lot of screens back here, looking at all social media, Facebook, Twitter, station email, looking for pictures and videos of uh, what storms are doing in our area. And I'm also posting whenever we issue a News 9 tornado warning, I will post all of that information on all of our social media pages. All right, so now we're going to move on to our largest weather pot in the Weather Center, and uh, this is often where you're going to find Lacey and Cassie on severe weather days. So, Lace, a lot goes on in this pod during severe weather. Yeah, it's a massive pod, and we've got multiple sources that we're monitoring. One of the things we're always looking at, each of us are looking at radar because you have to in Oklahoma. It takes a lot of eyes. We also have our storm trackers here. We can monitor them and their feeds, talk to the storm trackers here. But a lot of what I do is run radar while David's on the wall. So I'm zooming in, zooming out, changing the different products on our live radar. I'm changing the sources over to our different modes. And a lot of times it's kind of using two mice at once to monitor all 77 counties in Oklahoma. While that's happening, Cassie's over here drawing storm tracks. Yeah, so while Lacey is doing that, I'm actually drawing the storm tracks and I can let David know that, hey, David, we've got a track on that storm and I can actually adjust the time settings on that. I can adjust the speeds so I can let you know when that storm is actually heading your way. Well, let's take a look at the third weather pod that we have here in the Weather Center. And uh, truly, Justin, this is one of the more chaotic places that we have during severe weather. Yeah, a lot of places, a lot of things going on at one time, controlled chaos. Sometimes we have eight to 10 trackers tracking these storms all across Oklahoma. Storms change very rapidly, so I'm not only reading radar for them, but helping them navigate, getting ahead of the storms, being in the best position, get the best video. I'm also putting them on air whenever David calls for them. All right, thank you, Justin. Guess what, folks? There are two very important pieces of equipment of our storm tracking arsenal that did not make the move from our old station to the news station. Cassie Hyder has the latest on that. With our big move downtown, we've gotten several questions about Next Gen Live, our million watt radar. It stayed at Wilshire and Kelly. 
Griffin Media still owns the land where the radar is located. Just like all weather radars, Next Gen Live has to be in a wide open space away from any obstructions. When we first built the radar, we looked all over the metro for the best place to put it, and it turns out that was our, at the time, backyard. Next Gen Live will remain here. Jim Gardner and Sky News 9, however, have moved to Wiley Post Airport in a brand new hangar there. Uh, no matter how many jets are in here, the helicopter is always staged at the front of the door. We miss Jim, but because of noise issues with landing the chopper on the roof of the building, he needed to be relocated. The folks there always make sure he's fueled up and ready to go. Up next, we look back 10 years ago to May 20th, 2013. I talk with the one and only Jim Gardner on what it's like to track tornadoes from the air.